Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 20 of Will You Review My CV? I'm your host, Alan Wozni, and as two of my followers will know, I took a couple of months off from posting on this channel pretty much to focus on work. However, I was inspired uh, to create another episode after spending, you know, spending some time the last couple of weeks or so on the LinkedIn uh, Premium Career Group. Now, job seekers from around the globe, they tend to use the LinkedIn Premium Career Group you know, in search of advice or, or guidance on how to find their next role. And as I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you what I look at, what I look at on the LinkedIn Premium Group. And there's roughly 2.7 million people that are members of that group. Now, I, I don't know the ratio of you know, job seekers to HR executives to other, just other people who would like to be on that, in that group. But I do find the majority of the posts, probably 50% of the posts are job seekers. And the other 50% are people trying to add value by posting things of relevance to job search and so forth. I first want to, so I want to share my screen first. I want to share my screen on some of the posts that people make to, to let you see what I see is, you know, exactly what I'm speaking of. Now, my intention here is not to highlight uh, how I view their posts or judgment or whether or not there's a potential to assist such job seekers. There are definitely people more qualified than me uh, that to deal with such matters that on a daily basis. Like I, I'm not here to give people, find them jobs. I, I'm just not, I'm not about that. And there are people definitely in the short term that are way better qualified than that and, probably, and better, have better information on that. I certainly do not think I can roll in and provide immediate solutions or instant gratification to such job seekers. You know, my ideas stem around giving them career advice, things to help them over the long, the long haul, the long term. And as people know, on my website, uh, I include a paraphrased version of, of, a, of a, a line that Stephen Covey, um, his book includes, includes this, this, this phrase, uh, how to give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, uh, teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. So Stephen Covey, I, I first came across that in his books, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and another book called Principle Centered Leadership. Now, I read those books years ago, and but the, the, the information still sticks with you to this day. But as I, I kind of learn, so I have that, I did a paraphrase quote on my website, but when I was quoting who I put Stephen, I put that quote in into Google. And in fact, the quote stems from the Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, or Lao Tzu, if I get that wrong, sorry. He's the founder of Taoism. Now, for those who don't know that, I mean, Google, Google gives you a lot these days, but it appears that Taoism was first founded in the 4th or 3rd century BC, which is likely more than 2,400 years ago. So I think Stephen Covey, I mean, he's well, well, well versed in this, uh, this field and giving people skills that they need, not only for job search, but life skills. So my paraphrased version goes like this. Give a job seeker a lead you helped them once. Give a job seeker a set of tools to improve their approach to job search and you help them over their lifetime. So I'm gonna share my screen now and I wanna go through right to LinkedIn Premium and just let you see what I'm seeing uh, when I go, when I, when I roll in and give advice. Okay, so let's share the screen. And we're going to go find my LinkedIn premium. Here we are. Okay. So just to give you an idea, I'm going to, so this is open into that site. You, that's a paid, you, you have to pay to get into this pay to play. There are various levels. I think I took the career search one. There's job. If you're, you're actually in that, if you're an HR recruiter, so different levels of your membership into this, uh, into this group. So LinkedIn premium career group. I haven't looked at it for a couple of days. So I wanted to just share, go through and scroll through, see what people are posting. Um, okay, advice wanted, how does one break into the manager level? I have several years of experience, project management, education, but no supervisor position of a team. I, I'd probably look at Stephen Schultz and say, hey, you know, let people know about your, you know, what you can do 
you know, when you're ready to be a manager level, it's not like one day you, you become a manager and you're, you're ready to go. It's, it's the culmination of, you know, skill. I'd probably go to him if I, if I was talking to him and said, what do you think is important for a manager to skills to have, and then let them list it. And so, you know, going through his profile and his years, I, it, this one's a bit harder. It's probably one that a coach would be best to go one-on-one and then go through, this is a longer play. I'd probably give some ideas on that, but it's, it's a little tougher, but I'd, I, I would look at it from that angle. Okay, so let's go further down. And then people comment. I mean, they, they do it all the time. There's oftentimes, sometimes I read the comments just to see what others are saying, and maybe I can learn from that as well. Uh, what has been the most important advice? you've? So this is someone who's just looking for some information, trying to solicit conversation in the group. Hello to the group. I've just published an article. Okay, so not really job seeker. Hello, colleagues. I hope you are healthy and these days. I have the privilege to help a new school. So, okay. So still nobody really is job seeking in those ones. Hi, everyone, new to the group. Looking to use the classes that are available so that I can step data on what's happening in the workforce. Kind of a general comment. I don't know what that means. Um, hi, everyone. I would appreciate. So this is Omaima, Omaima Suleiman. Uh, hi, everyone. I would appreciate if recommends a business mentor coach for me, preferably in the finance field. Um, I do have a, a number of wonderful mentors from the organization I work for, but I also like to have someone who's, who, who look at things a different angle. I, this person, I'd probably say go to Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, and uh, find, you know, he's kind of a mentor to me for the last three, four years indirectly, but go to him and, you know, see what ideas, you know, what you can get your own ideas from a, a, a coach. If you're going to pay for a coach, they're going to charge you for their time. Um, but if you're in the finance field, I look at some fintech, what some of the, fin I don't know this person's experience, but that to me looks at what are some examples in fintech? What are some of the, you know, the, the new, the neo banks or challenger banks or the, the fintech uh, type payment uh, portals that are out there, Square being one. And the, there's a do not, um, it's called uh, buy now, pay later. And there's a company called Klarna. I think they just, they just had a 30 billion valuation. They're in Sweden, a little tiny country called Sweden. Uh, or a little, you know, but the massive company is Klarna. But I think they have they have operations all throughout Europe. So I, I'd, I'd want to know more about that person's background and their experience and what they're interested in. Um, and I'll go do one more here. So Leah, Le Leah Dershaya, uh, consulting extern. Hello, everyone. I'm new to this group. Nice to meet everyone. I mean, does anyone have interview tips? Would love to connect. So for that one, there's a guy called Eric Kramer. I've read his book on the, his audio book called interviewing skills or interviewing active interviewing and i'd go to her and say look if you're interviewing look at google google search any you know jobs um jobs interview skills and there's going to be millions hundreds of millions uh results to come back eric wrote that book roughly 10 years ago active interviewing it's fantastic in terms of treating the, the interview process like a sales process, selling your skills, selling, you know, back and forth questions with the actively engaged with the, the recruiter or the HR manager, whoever you're talking to. So that's the, that's all I would give. I just, here you go. Here's some Eric's uh, and highlight the fact that Google, the Google search will be, there's a ton of stuff out there. So um, I'm going to drop that now and I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run into my PowerPoint. So I'm going to stop screen sharing for a moment. And I want to, I want to roll into talking a little bit about, uh, you know, the career advices I've provided, you know, over since August, 2018, roughly 420 career submissions. And most of those up to this past May, they were pretty long winded. I, I, you know, some of them, some of them, when I responded to in LinkedIn or wherever, you know, there were like 10 separate posts or more because I'd really get into it. I'd really get into, I'd immerse myself into the research that supports it. Because, and also think about it, August, 2018 to, you know, so May, 2021, time passed. So I would, I would, I would, I would first of all, look at what I did before three years ago or two years ago to whenever it was. And then I would update it. So I'd spend a ton of time on researching whatever sectors they are. And they're really time consuming fun to do but as i said so that in the, this past few months i was working a lot so it was it, I, I didn't have that kind of uh time uh, to, to to do the research but especially i wanted to match the job seekers background 
and experience with the, you know what's out there, what I see, what's out there. So more than importantly, I think that the the intended recipients, my time, I can spend weeks, hours on these kind of things, but the individual, you know, I have to I have to put myself in their shoes. They want a job. They're looking for a job. So if I, I come up with this long-winded, I roll in with this long-winded 10, 10 posts, which each post is 12, I think 1,200 characters you get on LinkedIn. So that's, that's you know, 20,000, 30,000 characters, whatever how many pages that is. And it's, I didn't, that probably overwhelmed a lot of people, you know, to be fair, to be fair uh, they probably weren't ready for the volume of information to absorb that. And they may or may not truly benefit uh, from the material and the links and the suggestions I provided. So my recommendations now, when I went back, so this October, I, just beginning of October, I just said, I want to go in and see what, what's out there again. I want to, sometimes I have more time. Just, I thought I could probably be a little more practical and, and short and succinct and come up with some punchy, you know, some punchy uh, advice and to help them, you know, to help them go to the next level. So I'm going to jump right into the PowerPoint I prepared. And these submissions I made, there, you know, the, the PowerPoint didn't take me as long. Certainly the submissions I made with less than an hour, you know, with not even research, I just take what's, what's on top of my head and, and, and boom. So you saw what I looked at LinkedIn Premium. You know, I spent a little more time to put some thoughts together, but not that, e not that detailed. It doesn't take that long. So let's go. I'm going to share my screen again. And, uh, and this time I'm going to go look at my PowerPoint. Okay. Oops. Okay. So here is, um, let's start from the beginning. So two advices I gave in October. Um, career advice number 420, I think it was, I believe it was the 6th of October. I didn't put this down. This is today's date. This is episode 20. Uh, it, career advice number 422. Marissa Silveri, uh, Masters of Social Health, and she's, I think, in Melbourne, Australia. And the second one is career advice number 423 for Katarina Vodosova Refjova. I, I, sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. She's a teacher in Slovakia, Bratislava. So th the first one was Marissa Silveri on uh, uh, 22nd of, uh, uh, sorry, number 422 on the 6th of October. So just a couple weeks ago. She submitted the following comments in the link, like I showed you earlier. This was in the comment section. Hi, everyone. I'm looking for entry-level graduate social work roles and would appreciate your support. Thank you in advance for any connections, advice, or opportunities you can offer. Now, I have no opportunities. I, you know, how, I don't live, you know, I'm not in Melbourne. I'm not there. You know, how could I possibly know of it unless I was following that market? She's better placed there. But, I, you know, that this is what she's posted. And I think because of the social work or the healthcare, the mental health space, this is my, my I thought of that because this is pretty re relevant today in today's world. Let's look a quick, I did a quick background check on her. She's got a master's of social work. And a bachelor of communication, I believe, in the same. Uh, she's got a bachelor's degree or in uh, in communication back in 2017. Last few years, she's worked in the marketing administration roles in the, with healthcare companies or health groups. Um, she's been a behavior therapist for almost two years in the child and family services sector, in other roles within health agencies and care facilities over the years. And I made some of my references referred specifically or my recommendations made specific reference to those places that she's worked in the past, as you'll see. So Marissa Silveri, what did I say? This is, I went right at it. You know, recently I had two guests on my podcast, uh, Calgary Business Podcast, that focused on helping folks dealing with social and mental health. Episode 316 with Dr. Nicole Byers, not too long ago. She's a neuroscience, uh, neuroscience, um, I, I might get that wrong, but her company's called Rocky Mountain Neurosciences, and she deals with people with head injury and brain injuries. And then she also hosts her own podcast called The Bold Life. And she makes daily posts on Instagram talking about mental health and dealing with workplace issues or working from home. And it's, it's really practical stuff. Then episode 309 was with David, Dr. David Williamson. He's a clinical psychologist, also a PhD, like Dr. Nicole Byers, but they went different tracks in their, after their education. 
He's a clinical psychologist. He works, David works at uh, Woods Homes or Dr. Williamson. Uh, Woods Homes here in Calgary. It's a community focused, um, their focus is on the community, local communities, on treatment and support for children, youth, and families with mental health needs or issues. So I just recommended that to her. You know, I don't, don't make any judgments about but whether, whether or not she can, but she's dealing in this kind of family and social welfare. I believe those are relevant to her background and her experience. And then, you know, for me, you know, the mental health space isn't something I'm researching. I'm just aware of it. There's a lot of funding in mental health because of, probably because of COVID, uh, a lot of activity in that space uh, over the last uh, couple of years, pre-COVID, but more during COVID. A couple of, again, a couple of companies I found. Um, I'd already been looking at, at a list of, for this, uh, probably for David Williamson and Dr. Nicole Byers or others, but Miro Health of California. Recently, they raised funds. There's a digital therapy solution, Sondermind out of Colorado, just in July this year, they, they're an online clinical health solutions offering that. Komodo down in New Zealand, very close to where she lives. And that's probably what triggered my thought was, oh, I knew there was a New Zealand company. Just in August, they focus on student well-being. So obviously, you know, the stress of studying and whether it's online or, or in person, but that's a company out of New Zealand that's offering that solution. That's an online uh, student well-being platform. And then Headspace Health, uh, the company, I think they merged, two, two companies merged, and they provide virtual uh, mental health solutions. And then the last thing I recommended for Marissa, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, he, how do you, you know, if I go back to her question, let's go back to her question, because just make this clear why I'm, I'm, I'm looking for entry-level graduate work roles and would appreciate your support. Thank you for any connections, advice, or opportunities. So my advice is her to let people know, which, but she's a master. She's got a master's degree in social work. That's a pretty high level of, of uh, education to combine that with her communication skills. Go to Gary Vaynerchuk um, and take some of his, where he works on helping people and gives them ideas on branding and awareness. He's done two trips to, uh, down to, or I don't know how many trips, but that was back in 2018 or 19. He was in, in Auckland in New Zealand and in Melbourne, Australia. So he'd done trips down there. So to, you know, it might speak to her if she hears people talking in her accent or her, the, you know, the, the language, uh, English accent down there, an Aussie accent or whatever. I mean, it could, he just, he speaks to them at, in, their, in their space. So I think that would help her. My other recommendation is that she probably writes an article in Medium, uses Medium or Substack to share experiences from her. She did 500 clinic hours. 500 hours, I mean, that's probably a good two, three months worth of full-time work. And I'm sure that wasn't over one, you know, one or two months. So share the experiences, write an article, a short little article about her experiences from some of those 500 hours, maybe her experiences at the Royal Women's Hospital, what are women's issues dealing with? What are, what are people dealing with in her mind? You know, what are key issues? Share your, share your experiences. YouTube. You know, interview, invite people in the interview and talk to staff and maybe physiotherapists from the, the back in motion health clinic that she worked at. And then the last thing for, I suggested was Clubhouse. Create a ch Clubhouse chat room, invite frontline workers from the Royal Melbourne Hospital where she worked at to talk about key issues that they faced during COVID and post COVID and what's happening today. I mean, they probably also go back to the mental health. They are dealing with stresses. Uh, related to the COVID and them being frontline workers. So I think just invite some of those people to talk and let them have an outlet to talk. Clubhouse is one, but you can also use Twitter spaces. Invite people to chat. It's free. And, uh, you know, people like to talk about their their issues. So I'm going to stop there with Marissa. Thank you for that. I'm going to go one more, uh, share it with you now. Uh, career advice number 423 out of Bratislava, uh, Slovakia. And Katarina, I'm, I'm not going to say your name again. It's Rathiova, you know, her last name. Um, you know, the, it's not important. But so so she submitted on the career pretty lengthy. She put it pretty lengthy. I got two, two parts because I couldn't fit into the screen very well. Hi, everyone. I'm about to take a big step in my career path, and I would love to hear your opinion or experience. I've been working in the field of education, mainly ESL. I guess that's English as a second language uh, for six years. But I also have some experience with administration work. And that's, she has a virtual, it's called a virtual administrative uh, assistant. She's been, she's been doing that for a couple of years. 
but now I'm trying to focus on human resources. I've been interested in HR for some time. I'd like to spend my free time by learning here on LinkedIn, learning online courses. It made my I believe I would be really great in HR. It fits my personality and also my skills, mainly communication, dealing with people, evaluating, making research, organizing events and meetings, good time management, but also improvising and solving problems, etc. And this can she continues. This is quite lengthy. The problem is that I have a feeling that many recruiters who see my CV probably think I have no experience in HR, which is true, but they really cannot see how I had to master some of my skills being a teacher. A teacher has to be a good manager, advisor, problem solver, always looking for some challenges, learning new things. As a teacher, you have to be really flexible and be able to properly react to any unexpected events. You also have to be patient, but persistent and goal oriented. Stick to strict, but not to say strict, so there's some spelling there. Strict, but at the same time, really kind and helping. I think I have many things to offer. I just need a chance to prove it. What about you? Have you ever managed to make a breakthrough in a completely different job that you have been doing before? I'd really be happy to hear your stories. Now, I didn't share stories here. I wanted to tackle her, what she was looking for, what she's, you know, I... <laughs> I think there's some opportunity here to help her bridge the gap between teaching and HR. Some ideas, I, I don't know where she's going to go with this, and I didn't hear a response from her, but let's look at her background. She's working on her master's in special education. Now, this is in, in, in Slavic language or the Slovak language, so I, I wasn't quite sure exactly. That, I think it was a master's in special education. She's working on that now. She does have a bachelor degree in special education that she got back in 2016. And she has a degree or diploma, I'm not quite sure because again, it's in the Slovak language, in social work in 2012. So to back up her words that she's worked as a teacher for six years or so, you can see that her English teacher, homeschool teacher, lecturer for six plus years, and a virtual administrative assistant for almost three years, something that working from home, I don't know what kind of role or who she's helping, what kind of companies. So that backs up what she said in the, in the preamble, uh, quite a lengthy preamble that she had put on, on LinkedIn Premium. What did I suggest? I went right at blog posts similar to the previous, uh, the girl from Australia. What if she wrote a short blog post each day describing the similarities between teaching and HR? I mean, she kind of did that. I think she's, she knows it. She understands the similarities. So just write a post about it. Uh, find a title that can be changed slightly for each subtopic. And so I gave the example. I just had listened to a podcast by the uh, TechCrunch, two of the, two of the hosts from TechCrunch, or two of the, the writers, I think they write articles on, on tech, tech and so forth, Daryl Etherington and Jordan Crooks. And the podcast is called Found. <laughs> I found that podcast. And they interviewed the founder of the children's book series, A Kid's Book About. So from that, it gave me the idea, why, not, why didn't she write, you know, a blog, a, you know, HR, the similarities of HR and teaching, and it could just, the first thing she could say is talk about performance reviews and report cards, because preparing a report card is thinking that what's happened the last three, four months with the student and putting into a review, performance review, like an like employee, and then a report card. So I think that could be her first article, a, you know, HR and teaching blog about, you know, something like that. So that was kind of the reference I made. And then taking that concept of the blog and moving into a YouTube channel, she could take the same content from the blog and start a YouTube channel. Maybe start in her own language uh, where she's comfortable, more comfortable, but I think she's an English teacher as well. So maybe that's, maybe she's equally comfortable in English and her written, written dissertation up above <laughs> was quite lengthy, but it was quite good in English. A couple of spelling mistakes, but that was nothing else. Over time, she could produce the same content in English if she does it in Slovak language. And then I'd sit here, I, I wrote, in, the shorter the blog post, the shorter the content you'll do on YouTube. Like this, what I'm doing right now is a bit lengthy, but the shorter her blog post, the shorter the content, and the quicker, the quicker she can get out there and make new content, just cycle through. The more content, because as Gary Vaynerchuk says, Content is the variable to success. So the more content you create, 
let the market decide what's work or what's right. And then the last thing on this, on this genre is Clubhouse. She could start a chat room to invite HR experts from Bratislava or in the region, European, whatever, to talk about the profession. Just what changes have happened because of COVID and what, you know, how's your role different as an HR? So get, get them to talk. People, as, I, as I said earlier, um, you know, get people talking about issues and what they love to talk about. And I, I, you know, and I can't guarantee it, but you've got to ask people and come on to your Clubhouse chat room. It's free. So continuing on with Clubhouse, I, I would, you know, I, it's not such a quick, oh, just start a Clubhouse. So I had to give some examples. So I said, invite experts from Bratislava to talk about the profession, potential topics, COVID impact on hiring and recruiting. What permanent changes have you made to due to COVID? What stayed the same? What hasn't changed in your job? Um, how does technology play a role in your uh, HR work, such as zip recruiter to, or to source candidates, maybe workable for onboarding. And I mean, there's some pretty cool stuff on workable. They do interviews. They literally interview you through questions and maybe YouTube, you know, YouTube, maybe a video. Uh, you've got to do, you know, answer questions through a YouTube video, uh, some kind of video. Um, workable does that. It's really cool. And then there's, you know, maybe for performance reviews, companies like 15.5 or Zestful. And I gave these examples when I responded to Katarina. And then the last one, bench, maybe Brent, bench prep or a company like Go One for professional development. So they're, the companies, are, I don't know which companies do this. I think some do all of that. Maybe Workable does. But there are companies that help together specific areas of, of the HR function. And then because she's a educator, she spent many years in that, she's got degrees, you know, that's her forte in parallel. I recommended in parallel to studying HR, why not go to the ed tech, what's out there today? Maybe blog, maybe a YouTube or Clubhouse. One of those three or all of them could focus on education technology or ed tech and the innovation in her city, maybe her country and across the globe and just focus on that look at the differences between ed education offerings uh, in the West and probably by those by Slovak companies or ed tech companies in, in her country, if that exists. And then the other thing I suggested uh, is corporate training because she's got the skills as a teacher. You know, if she can't get in as an HR, maybe she can get in as a corporate trainer. There are companies today focusing on upskilling, retraining, retooling, reskilling existing workforces rather than going to the market and trying to hire for the, for certain talent or skills, they just they retrain their workforce. So Degreed, out of the UK, which is not far from where she is, it's an upskilling platform. And there's a company called Atensi out of Norway. They focus on corporate learning and development platforms. So the what if, as they're written here, the what if, what if she reached out to them and said, hey, I'm interested in offering getting this into, coming into here into Slovakia. Um, what, you know, what can I, you know, what can we do? Imagine if she reaches out to them and they say, hey, we kind of like your background. Why don't you come work for it? Why don't you work for us in the country? We'll represent our, you know, our platforms in the country. There's probably several more she could find like that. But that's, you know, I don't know. If you don't do it, you don't do it. So that's, that's that for that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. I'm going to go back uh, and just, just sum up here. I mean, you know, the, I think... <laughs> I don't know what the solution for anybody is, but if, it, if they treat job search like startup or a new business, like something, and, you know, if they were a startup, because I, I tend to work with a lot of startups the last few years in new business, and it's, there's no clear cut way things you should do. But as I've outlined in past episodes, my career advice is not centered around finding a job or referring a candidate to a potential new role. And, you know, the advice I, I provide, and as you can see, is it's not cookie cutter. It's not one size fits all and here you go. It depends on their situation, depends on their past experience, their education, where they live, their geography. Even if there's interest in hobbies, I've given plenty of advice in the past. If somebody's a musician and maybe they can look at the, you know, the technology in, in there or maybe social media and posting their songs or, or whatever. So, you know, th there's a lot of factors. And it, it depends on technology as well. It depends on the companies they're interested in, the sectors they're interested in. So there's no one size fits all. There's definitely no cookie cutter uh, approach to a career advice. So that I truly believe, and that's, you know, in today's job market, 
an individual should treat their approach to job search in the same manner that as if they were starting a new business. Now, not, not a lot of people are starting new businesses every day, but if you were, perform a SWOT analysis. What's a SWOT analysis? Strengths, SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, uh, threats, and opportunities. So SWOT being an OT, opportunities and threats. What are your strengths and weaknesses? Write them down as an individual. As I said earlier, you Google strengths and weaknesses in an interview, you're going to get hundreds of thousands of results. But put them down. What are you? What are you good at? What do you know? What are you not so good at? And try to find those things out there. To 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 you know, if your strengths are something, then you know, you don't need to worry about it. So the weaknesses, maybe you want to study, research. Like she was talking about HR, she's going to do LinkedIn learning. Great, go out there and find those things that you're not good at, and and, and try to bring that. You know, try to bring that into your into your remit. What are the threats of you succeeding in your job search? No one's hiring for my skills or automation is uh, being used for routine work that I used to perform. I mean, so those are, those are some of the threats, but what are the opportunities? What are available in your current market or current area of expertise? What's out there? What's the new technology in your area that you could become an expert in? What companies or sectors are you interested in? Maybe, maybe they're not currently hiring, uh, but that doesn't stop you from subscribing to the company's newsletter. You know, this company, I really want to work for Coca-Cola, but my area, they're not, there's no jobs available. So subscribe to their newsletter, subscribe, uh, make a list of their competitors, make a, make a list of companies that offer the same or competing products or services. You can also follow the companies on social media, follow the lead, the executive from that company, follow them on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Find out what they're doing and follow them and stay current on their activities over the next six to 12 months. Now, such, such actions and taking those, following them uh, isn't going to guarantee, it's not going to find you a job. There's no guarantee. But imagine, imagine how your discussions will go uh, with a recruiter or maybe an HR manager from that company. If you spend the last six months focusing on their industry, their sector, their company, and you get an interview. Imagine that, how that discussion will go. Imagine if you don't. Thanks for watching. And th th this has been a lot of fun. Thanks for watching and uh, have a great day and stay safe.